Hey Airsoft players, welcome to HitGuns.com. In today's video we're going to be going over a comprehensive guide of how to tear down and how to repair a common issue with a CM28 uh, AK-47 assault rifle. The tools you're going to need, um, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, a precision screwdriver with a uh, point with a FH0 Phillips head, and a T9 or T8 Torx. T9 fits a little better inside the gearbox screws. And you may end up needing a hammer or a rubber mallet. And you'll be needing some thread locker or Loctite, whatever brand, as long as it, it's thread locker. Okay. The first step of taking apart an AK is, of course, the basic safety measures. Make sure the gun's unloaded, make sure the chamber's cleared, and make sure the battery's disconnected. You don't want this thing, you, you don't want to check your barrel and then have it go off in your eye or something along that line, or get a nice little shock from the back, etc., etc. So, basic safety. Okay. The first step of taking apart an AK is one of any way you can go. You can remove the stock first, you can remove this, the grip first, uh, you can remove the selector first. I recommend the selector first because this is attached to the gearbox. It's attached to a threaded bracket inside of the gearbox and that will prevent you from removing this entirely. Okay. So, In order to get the selector arm off, if you'll notice there's a small round hub right here. Um, you could pry this off with a uh, flathead screwdriver or a prying tool, whichever you choose to use. Just when you do take this off, try and do this in a 360 motion. You want to be able to uh, gently be able to pry it off. You should get one side up, one side of this hub up, and then the other side. You should just be able to like this, kind of pry it off like that. This is to prevent these forks on the hub from breaking off. You don't want to break those. It's, this is purely an aesthetic piece, but it looks a little more complete when this is on here. Because you can see a big Phillips head screw is kind of unsightly. Okay. Once you've gotten that off, you want to take your Phillips head, whichever one you choose, and unscrew this screw. This is the Phillips head screw. The left lefty loosey righty tighty rule applies here. Just loosen it. Now when you pull this off, there's going to be some hardware that comes with it. There's a small brass um, bushing that goes inside here. This is to keep the screw threads from getting damaged by the um, the connection, the linkage hub that's attached to the um, that's attached to the the selector arm. And there's like there's a retaining uh, washer right here. It looks sort of like a clutch plate on a car, if you ask me. But um, zoom in on all this so you guys get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Okay. As you can see. There you go. There's your lock washer. There's your brass bushing right there. Once you've done this, uh, there should just be the linkage there should just be the linkage hub here and the selector arm. The selector arm should come off. Most times it's pressed in there pretty hard. Uh, it may take the linkage hub with it. You want to take the linkage hub out. You do it with your fingers, or if it doesn't want to give, take a screwdriver, lift it out. Okay? It's so got all that out. Keep all your hardware together. Don't lose it. Okay. Zoom in out here. Okay. Next step you want to move on to is removing the grip. That's also attached to the body, which you don't want to lose any of these screws again. Okay. In order to remove the grip from the body, there is a small screw on the bottom of the handle. It's a Phillips head screw. You should be able to see it right there. And you just unscrew this. Left, un left unscrew it. Comes right out. Once you have that off, Slide the grip off. That should expose the motor, that should expose the motor cage and the lower portion of the gearbox. Okay. Once you have all of this off, the next step to uh, get this apart would be to you want to disconnect the Tamiya connector from the other Tamiya connector connected to the gearbox inside here. That flew over your head. We'll show you in a moment. Okay. There's three screws holding the stock in place. There's a 
a two-pronged fork that holds the stock in place. If this should break, this is repairable. Most people get the misconception that the gun is broken from the receiver down. This is based on a Marui design, which has this these forks on here, which can be removed by getting rid of two screws, which we'll show you in a moment. The most particular screws to get out is possibly this one right here, located right uh, below the motor cage. You want to be able to unscrew it. I recommend doing this with the grip off because there's more clearance for your screwdriver handle. Or if you can, use a long shaft uh, screwdriver, hand, or screwdriver, which will be able to uh, pass the grip and everything else. You can probably do this while the uh, grip is on if you have a long shaft screwdriver. But work with what you got. Save yourself a lot of headaches. Okay. Once you have both these screws off, again, take care not to lose any of your screws. Once you have these off, that's done. The next part is getting the screw off. This is pretty self-explanatory. Not dropping your screwdriver. And you should be able to take the screw out. Okay. Didn't quite unthread it all the way there. Okay. Then you should be able just to pull the stock off. You don't want to pull it off entirely quite yet. You want to be able to just to expose the wiring right here. If it doesn't give or if it doesn't let you go any further, don't force it because you might break the Tamiya connector inside the stock. Uh, what you want to do is just take off the butt plate like you would for a battery and it should free the Tamiya connector up. If it's not freed by then, straighten it out inside the stock, pull it out like this. There you go. That should be pretty straight. Kind of guide the Tamiya in there. Try not to pull it out of the way if you don't feel like pushing the wiring through the stock again. It's kind of tedious. Okay. Here you have a small type Tamiya connector, like on the other end. Okay. Same principle as a battery. You just want to um, you just want to be able to disconnect it, like so. Okay. Keep your wiring inside the stock. Put your stock off to the side. Okay. Once you've done all that, the next step would be to remove the bolt housing cover. This would be a bolt housing cover on a real AK. In this case, it's just uh, if this was a certain model of AK um, that we sell, the battery would go here, a stick type battery would go right here, and the Tamiya would be coming out this end as opposed to the rear end. Okay. There's two steps to doing this. This is possibly the most tedious step about taking apart the body. The first step you want to take is to disconnect the bolt, uh, the bolt rod from the uh, from the locking from the locking mechanism that holds the uh, bolt, cap, bolt housing in place. What you want to do to get that off, what you want to do is just pull back on it, and you should be able to just roll it out. Let's get a zoom in on this while I do this. Tricking my hands out of the way. There you go. All right, you should just be able to pull back on it, lift it out like that, and try and keep it like this. When you t try to take off this plastic covering, which will be the next step, you want to take care as to not pull this out because it is a pain and a half to get back in, and you have to line up certain brackets and such like that, and it's just a big hassle, so just avoid yourself a headache. Try to take care when you do this. The next step, depending on which model of AK you have, you want to be able to remove the hop-up lever, which is on the inside of the bolt door right here. It can be either plastic or it's metal. With the metal one, we recommend you remove it because it's a little less forgiving. With the this model, since it seems to be plastic, you might just be able to bend it inwards and lift it out, but just so you don't break anything, you might want to just take it out anyway because it's a lot easier just to avoid it than have to put in a new hop-up because of it. On the inside right here, there's a small Phillips head screw that holds the uh, hop-up hop lever in place. So you can get a zoom in on it. It's kind of hard to see since it's a black plastic piece. So, okay. okay. You should be able to see it. It's right there. Yeah. You want to take your precision screwdriver and pull that out. The 
This may be difficult as the plastic uh, arm wants to flex, so you might just have to sit there and m gently push on it in order to get the screw out. And once you have the screw out, take care not to lose it. The screw is excruciatingly tiny, you don't want to lose that. The next step is to remove this small screw. This is what holds this plastic cover onto the body. So just do that by unscrewing it. Don't unscrew any things by now. What are you doing working on an airsoft gun? Okay. Alrighty. You should just be able to lift back on it. There's interlocking tabs on the sides of these uh, this plastic housing and on the receiver that hold it in place. As you can see, I've already kind of just broken them off right there. Not really broken. Okay. And then you should just be able to pull back, lift up, comes off. Now, if you didn't take off the hop up arm, there should be a. The arm just should, just should fall on the body. And it should be right there. Okay. Now, you're about 75% of the way done when it comes to taking off the body. So, let's get a zoom out here. The next step to doing this would be to remove the four screws on the bo bottom portion of the body. This is so you can remove the barrel portion from the lower receiver portion of the gun. There's four screws here. There's one, two, three, four. Okay. Same rule applies here. When you separate the barrel from the body, you want to take care as to not uh, lose their small nuts inside of the body. They do this for the sake of, I guess, cost effectiveness and should the screws inside the body strip, it doesn't damage the body as opposed to just damaging some screws which are easily replaced as opposed to having to get a new upper receiver. Okay. There's no particular order you have to take these off, but when you tighten them, I do recommend you try and tighten them in a clockwise motion, similar to that of when you do uh, change a tire on a car. It just makes things go a lot neater and it causes less strain when you're moving the gun. Sometimes these screws may give you trouble trying to come out. The best advice I can give you to see that these screws come out is to take um, a flathead screwdriver or a razor blade knife and place it on the side of the threads of the screw. This will act as another um, threading as another threading device, so you can the screw will just come out on its own as opposed to having to pull it out, pull up on it, and risk uh, stripping the screw. Strip screws mean a big headache down the road. Once you've done all this, again, watch out for the nuts coming out of the body. You should just be able to remove it, like so. Do you see? One of the nuts fell out. Okay. Try and keep all this together. And on the right side of the upper receiver, there's a small spring that sits right here, which is, um, this is just a, a tensioner that they use to hold the, um, the guide rod in place for the uh, bolt handle. That's just so it sits there nice and tight. Okay. Once you have the upper receiver out of the way, move it aside. Okay. Now to get the to get the gearbox out of the body, it's pretty simple after this, seeing as how you've removed everything that holds it in place. You want to push the Tamiya out the back of this fork right here. Okay. You should just be able to guide this out. Okay. And now you have the gearbox separated from the body. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're going to show you how to disassemble a version 3 AK-47 gearbox. Okay. The first step to doing this, depending on what model of version 3 you have, most of uh, the SEMA models, this one example, have Phillips head screws that hold the gearbox shell in place. Okay. There's two steps that you should be worried about before warned that be careful when you um, be careful when you keep your parts together because you don't want to lose this portion right here. This is your selector arm. This is a necessity to your gun's performance, and it can very easily get lost. And when you put this back on, there's a special process to getting the teeth aligned and getting it straight. If it's not aligned properly, the full auto, semi auto may work not work properly, which is a major pain to do if you don't do it right. So once you have the gun together and you go to shoot it and 
it doesn't shoot in full auto, or it shoots in full auto and then shoots in semi-auto, then that explains what it is. Okay. The first step to taking this apart would be to remove this protection cap right here. This is just to keep the keep dirt out of the gearbox from touching the sector gear. The sector gear is right here. The spur gear is right here, and the bevel gear is right here, and the pinning gear is attached to the motor. So. Uh, this keeps dirt from getting inside the sector gear mostly because it's pretty much exposed once this is removed. So this can be removed by snap it off on one side, and you don't like that feel against your nails because this gearbox has that texture that makes your teeth hurt when you run, run your nails against it. Okay. Take the flathead screwdriver. You should be able to pry off the prong. There you go. And as you can see, part of the sector gear is exposed right here. The next step is to remove the selector arm. Okay. You should be able to just remove the first portion of it, put that aside, and then take off this portion, which is what activates the safety and what um, prevents the trigger from moving back. Okay. Once you have that done, you want to remove the motor cage from the gearbox. This is done with two Phillips head screws. They're the longest screws inside the gearbox. And as you can see from the factory, it's all thread locked in there, so it may, prov may provide a little bit of difficulty getting it out, so. You wanna just take these screws out, left unloosen them. Okay. Get that screw out, don't lose any of your screws. When separating your parts, you might want to separate internal parts from external parts, just so you don't get them confused. Okay. And your gearbox, your gearbox, your, your motor cage should just be able to come off. The next step would be to remove the quick connectors, which are located right here and here. There's a positive and a negative lead. They're usually marked on the top of the motor sink. There's a red dot on the side you need to put the red wire, and a black. And there's no dot, just the silver dot right there. It comes right off. Okay, this is done. You can pull off the motor cage, and then disconnect the wiring by pulling it off like so. There you go. And your motor cage is separated from your body. Okay. The next step to getting this apart would be to remove. The selector arm assembly, this is um, the ambidextrous part which connects to the, s the selector plate on the other side, which is right here. This is what engages and disengages the full auto, semi auto. This latch right here determines which mode you're in. There's just, as you go along, you'll understand how that works. Okay, so you want to be able to remove this. This is also thread locked in there, it may or may not be easy to get out. And you should just be able to lift this portion off right here. Or if not, it's going to be difficult. Get a flathead and just pry it off. There you go. Comes off like that. Okay. Then the other portion should come out the other side. Memorize what side goes on what. The long input goes on the left side. And this portion right here, the part that's just the connection, uh, goes on the right side. Once you've done that, you're almost to the final step of getting uh, splitting the gearbox apart. There's two uh, extra steps you need to take. There's you have to remove the screws from the body. There's four holding it in place total. There's one on the front portion right here, one right here towards the lower portion of the front. There's one right behind the trigger, and there's one that's under the selector assembly. Also on the top, there's a retaining. Uh, I don't know what you'd call this. I guess a retaining slider bracket. The only thing I can think of. Okay. Yeah, you want to be able to slide this off. We'll show you how to do that in a moment. This is pretty handy for when you want to test your shim job or you want to make sure that the gearbox spins properly, etc., etc. It's one notable feature about the version 3. So, like, first step you want to do is remove the screws. As you can see, these ones are providing difficulty. So, you want to take a larger screw driver or a larger bit and get that off. Just like that. Okay. If you like text yet, everyone, 
certainly hope so. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah, all your screws are removed. Next step would be to get the slider plate off. Some are easier than others to pull off. Usually some you can just use with grip on and it should be able to pull off. Okay. To get this portion off right here, you're going to need a fill, uh, flathead uh, screwdriver in order to get this off. So what you can do is you can take the flathead, put it under here, just kind of slide it under here. Kind of bend this up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to get off. And then you just want to. So this can prove to be incredibly difficult if you're not careful. Okay, once you get this off. Should just be able to come off like that. Uh, the best course of action to get this portion off now would be to use a pair of pliers and grab it from under here, like a pair of needle noses, and pull this forward. But I don't have a pair right now, so I guess I just have to just slide it off like that. A little bit of ingenuity never hurt anybody. Okay. Don't lose this portion. The gearbox should be just about free to get apart. This is done. You want to split this portion apart, and you want to watch out for two things that pop out. There is a anterior reversal latch right here, which is has a habit of just going everywhere. This trigger assembly is going to spring out this way, and the guide rod is guaranteed to come out. So the best way to prevent the most catastrophic one of them all, possibly springing off and hitting someone next to you or something along that lines, is to hold this portion down as you remove as you split the gearbox in half. You can split the gearbox in half using a flathead. Can, any portion of it should do. See? It comes off like that. Okay. And your gearbox should be opened up. This is what the inside of a version 3 looks like. Okay. Let's name your anatomy real quick. You've got your cylinder assembly, which is where all of your compression is, where everything that you do or anything that your gun does is powered through here. You got your spring, you got your guide rod, which holds the spring in place, you got your trigger switch assembly, and you've got your gears. This is your sector gear, your spur gear, and your bevel gear. And this is your anti reversal latch. This prevents these from spinning backwards and potentially causing damage to your teeth. Okay. And as we take it apart, we'll show you more. And this portion right here is important to your feed system, which is what essentially causes the BB to feed into your hop-up chamber, as you see right here, as a spring action. Uh, this, be careful when handling this, don't bend this, try not to break it, because if this breaks, your gun's not going to feed, period. In this video, we're going to address a common issue that we run into with version 3 gearboxes, the AK notably. Um, out of the blue, real deus ex machina, the Trigger will start not engaging, as in it won't push the trigger the trigger bridge into the contacts, which can prove to be a real nuisance because it's a it's a minor problem that can turn into a a, a hindrance. You can't use your gun once this problem happens. So this is usually caused due to a uh, poor quality control on behalf of companies. What they'll do is. There's supposed to be a set screw that holds this uh, housing in place that keeps that from happening, keeps the uh, the trigger bridge from moving all over the place and causing causing this to misalign right here, this um, trigger portion. Okay, to fix this, um, if you have access to it, get your hands on a coarse thread 0.9 millimeter uh, coarse uh, screw, metric screw. This, this will help alleviate this problem, primarily. Um, you may have to dremel it, file it to a certain length, because on the other portion, on the other side of the gearbox, you don't want this to rub against your, your um, selector plate. This can cause your selector plate not to move or damage your selector plate, and you don't want that. Okay. The first step to getting to the trigger switch assembly and installing the screw is to... Remove your cylinder assembly. This is done by, you want to be able to pull the guide rod out, like this, and the spring along with it. 
Usually on SEMA guns, there's a small washer that acts as an anti-torsion device, which will cause damage to your spring over time. But a bearing guide rod works better than this. So let's put that on side. Okay. And you want to be able to remove your cylinder. Okay. So your cylinder should just slide out. Take care not to lose any of your bushings. If you don't want to re-shim your gun, I recommend you keep your bushings and your shims in the place that they want to. So, If you want to not do that, push forward on your, on your tappet plate. Slide it over the bearing, uh, bush bearing bushing. Just pull this out. Your whole cylinder, cylinder assembly should start sliding out. Be careful not to lose the spring and be careful not to let it pop out. A small spring right here attached to the gearbox and attached to the tappet plate, which causes it to return forward when it feeds. This one didn't want to go anywhere, so you're in luck with that one. Right. As you can see, the trigger assembly is just hanging there, which is what causes the trigger slip to happen. Okay. Again, when you you want to remove your gears next, be careful not to lose the order that your shims are in. If you don't want to reshim it, if you do want to reshim it while you're in here, then have fun. You know, do what you got to do. Didn't mean that sarcastically, folks. It just, um, sometimes I'd rather pull teeth than do shimming. Okay. Pull your gears out. Okay, you want to pull out your bevel gear first. It's easy to get to. And you want to pull out your anti-reversal latch. Take care not to uh, lose the small spring that's attached to it or damage the small spring that's attached to it because the spring is a real nuisance to find. We have them, just, you know, if you can, try to avoid damaging it. Okay, remove your sector gear, and then remove your spur gear. Okay. Sometimes the bushing may want to go with it, sometimes it may not. If you can, if you can help it, try and keep the bushing on there, because it'll help you keep your shims in order. Once you've done all this, okay, you should have just your trigger housing exposed. That should just be the only thing attached to your gearbox. Attached to your trigger housing is a spring that attaches to the the trigger bridge, which you don't um, you don't want to attach this while you do this. So if it comes undone, then we'll show you how to put it back on. For now, it's not necessary. So okay, take that off. And your next step is to remove your trigger assembly, which is if it's in place. If it's in place pretty well, like this one, you don't want to move it. If it isn't, then you can take it off. Okay. Don't remove your you can remove your spring that attaches to that too. Okay. Once you have all that exposed, you should just have your trigger housing right here. Okay. Now, what you want to do is make sure it seats properly. I'm going to zoom in on this. Okay. You want to make sure it seats properly inside the gearbox when you do this. If you notice, there's a small hole right here. This is the screw that they commonly miss from the factory. Okay. So if you have your machine screw, your tiny little machine screw, this one particularly, okay, you want to put that on the end of your screwdriver. If you have a magnetic head, this helps right here. Okay. So you want to put this screw inside there and just thread it through. It may take a little bit of force because you, if you don't have a self-tapping screw, this may be a nuisance. Okay. If you did this right, it should be very snug, very secure. It should be coming out. Okay. Also, if it's the right, uh, if it's the right length on the other side of the gearbox, it should be coming out. This hole right here. There's a small hole right there. If it's popping out of this end, you don't. You might want to take a file, take a Dremel to it, and get it the right size. Try not to Dremel it while it's inside the gearbox because you don't want to damage these rails right here because that's what attaches to the selector plate. On this particular model, it doesn't have a selector plate that, uh, long enough to reach this. That's mostly for the G36, uh, the AUG gearbox, which has the mechanic or the has the mechanical electric cutoff right here. So that's secure. 
we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have this apart, and now that we've fixed the selector assembly, let's uh, put this back together. Okay. The first thing you want to do is put the spur gear in. This is usually the order that we recommend putting it in because everything connects to this. So, take your spur gear, put it right there. If you didn't, if you follow the advice I gave you earlier, you should have the bushing still attached to the uh, uh, the gears, so you don't lose your shims and that you don't have to reshim it. But again, if you guys want to reshim it, it's all up to you. Okay. Once you have the spur gear in place, you want to put the sector gear in next. Now this is important here that you have to make sure that this um, your sector chip right here is facing anywhere outside of this 90 degree angle radius right here because when you put your tappet plate in this can get in your way. This is basically what engages your tappet plate and makes it return forward and backwards. So you want to make sure that clears. And make sure your teeth are facing in a downwards position, in a 180 degree position because you don't want that in the way. Because once you go to put your piston in, it's going to prove to be a real nuisance to get it back in. Okay. The next step is to get your spur gear in, or your uh, your bevel gear in. This is one of the more meticulous gears you get in because you have to put the anti-reversal latch in. But we'll wait to do that one last. We'll first get the piston assembly in place. So to get the piston assembly in place, you should just be able to drop this in and set this spring up on this peg right here. But before you do all that, you want to make sure that your trigger assembly, at least the, the bridge assembly, is connected to the gearbox as well with the spring that came with it. This is done by, there's a small peg under here, underneath this portion of the trigger assembly. And you should just be able to slide it over. You should be able to lift this portion up just a little bit, be able to slide it under. Okay. Now you want to attach this portion to the the peg up here so you don't um, so this springs back and forth and that's what you want. You can use a you can use a small screwdriver or you can use a narrow headed screwdriver so it will slide on there. It should sit in between the two uh, ridges inside the, the peg right here. It's kind of an F shape, so it should sit in between the F portion right there. Okay. And if you did this right, this should spring back and forth properly. Like so. Okay. Alrighty. You could put the trigger assembly in right now if you want to, but there's an easier way to go about this. And um, we'll show you the easier way. It's a little more technical, but it's... Easy. It makes things a lot easier to do because everything's together once you put it in. When you put the uh, spring on the the tap plate, there's a small like C portion right here. There's a you see right there. You want to put the spring loop on there on the piston portion. So put your piston inside the gearbox like so. You want to make sure that these portions of the of the piston nozzle right here, the cylinder nozzle assembly head right here sit on these small uh, groove pegs on the inside of the uh, gearbox. Okay? If you did this right, it should just sit inside there. It should just... Like so. Okay. If you still have the piston in here, you want to make sure that the, uh, the grooves of the sides of the piston touch with the grooves inside the gearbox right here. Should you decide to grease the piston, try not to over-grease it, because if you over-grease your, uh, your soft gun, it's basically the equivalent of over-shimming of over it, which can cause higher strain, because you're using too much grease or too heavy of a grease. This can cause problems. This can cause damage to your gears. Just excessive wear that you don't need. You want to make sure that everything sits as flush as possible. Especially the piston assembly, because if this doesn't sit straight, the piston's not going to crank at all. It's not going to be able to get pulled by the sector gear. Okay. And once you have all that done, you want to wait to put your spring and spring guide rod back in until the last step, because that 
just wants to move around on its own. And when you put this in, be careful not to break your guide rod teeth because that can cause major nuisance down the road. Okay. What you want to do next? So you want to put your bevel gear in. And this is done by setting your anti-reversal latch in there first. You want to make sure the anti-reversal latch is a very unique shape. You want to make sure that the flatter portion of the anti-reversal latch faces towards the bevel gear. That's what you want because if it doesn't, then it's not going to touch right. And this portion of the spring should be fitting just like that. So there you go. Should sit just like that. Okay. Now, when you put the spur gear or when you put the bevel gear in, you want to just wait until the teeth mesh. There you go. Version 3 gearboxes have a little more tolerance with the anti-reversal latch assembly. It's usually the trigger assembly that gives you the bigger nuisance. Okay. Once you have all this in place, you want to put your spring in next. Okay. If you have a good enough gearbox, it's not going anywhere. And this one apparently doesn't want to go anywhere, so should just be able to put the other half of the gearbox on there. Okay, so put your gearbox shell, the other half of your gearbox shell on there. Now you want to push in on any parts that may be obstructing the ease of the ease of uh, putting the gearbox together. Uh, a good another good tool to use in this would be a set of picks, or you can use a narrow-headed screwdriver. I'm using a 0 .9, 0 .7. Uh, uh, Allen head from a precision screwdriver, which works just as well. Probably causes less wear. Okay. You want to make sure that none of the, this is all properly aligned right here. You can use this by aligning this and this and this. Okay. And it should just snap together. Now, the next step is getting this trigger in. Okay. If you notice with the trigger comes a spring, um, this is a tensioner spring, so it has a um, shorter end here and a longer end here. You want the shorter end to go inside the gearbox. There's a small groove. It's even if I zoom in, you're not gonna be able to see it. But there's a small groove right here on the front peg, on the front peg hole right here. It's a small, probably three millimeter square hole, square or rectangle, depending on how they cut it from the factory. And you should just be able to push the short end of it into that square hole like so. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right. and then you gotta be able to get your trigger in there. You can do this by putting the first portion of the peg in there. Okay. You can see this may prove to be difficult to do, so. In order to get this front peg in, you might want to split the gearbox just a tiny bit, and then set that in place, like so. It should just snap into place like so. And you should just be able to, like so. Okay. Both holes should align properly. Everything sits properly, everything's aligned. If the gearbox isn't pushed together, it's probably because the uh, the trigger's misaligning on the other side. And once you have all that done, it should be together. Everything fits straight, everything sits straight. Okay, cool. Once you have all that done, you want to take this cool little slide bracket. Put it on top of your gearbox so it doesn't split apart when you're putting it back together. Okay. There you go. Just like that. The next step would be to put your motor cage on. This makes things a lot easier. Put your motor cage and your motor back on. Make sure that the art end of it sits towards the back. On the parts of CM02B on the side of it. Faces up. And where these 
ingrooved holes are up towards this portion of the gearbox. Okay. Okay, screw this down. These other screws I recommend tightening right now. This will hold your gearbox together so you don't have to worry about it coming apart when you're trying to do the next step. So it's nice and good. Nothing's going anywhere. You can choose to whether or not you want to uh, connect your gearbox. Just make sure it's on the right lead. There's your, ne there's your negative lead. There's your positive lead, as you can see right there. Negative. You see the dots right, right there. Maybe a tight fit. It seems like they got it pretty tight in there, so you want to make sure that everything sits straight. <clears throat> there you go. When you put the black wire through, you want to make sure it sits to the groove right here on top of the motor cage, because there's a groove where it sits. You don't want that to pinch on the uh, on the handle on the handle assembly because it'll cause a short in the gun. Okay. And since you're probably not going to have to take the gearbox apart again. Put your uh, little dirt cap on here so you can keep the dirt off your sucker key. This isn't necessary, but it it's there for a reason. So, so it wouldn't hurt if you lost it. It wouldn't hurt if you kept it. So, but if you can, try and keep it complete. Okay. Gearbox is mostly together for the most part. Now, here comes the tricky part. It's getting the selector arm assembly back on, which is, to say the least. A daunting challenge for most people who are not familiar with this particular gearbox system. What you want to do is take the longer portion of the gearbox, this right here, uh, the selector assembly, and you want to take the short portion. This is going to go on this portion right here. It's going to go on that side, okay. and this one's going to go through this side. When you put this portion in, it really doesn't matter what select what position the selector's in because this would be safe. This would be safe. This would be semi, or this would be full, and that would be semi. Okay, so you want to you want to make sure that the longer portion of the gear teeth, there's a, as you can see, it's a wider tooth right here. You want to make sure that faces towards this intort screw right here. So. You can have it mesh perfectly. You can have it. Perf try not to let it go too far like this because you risk having the teeth go off sync, and you don't want that. This is what we're trying to prevent. Okay. So it should be stuck in semi mode, so to speak. Okay. So we'll flip the gearbox over. Okay. Now you want to take this portion right here, and it's it got a it's got a half moon groove inside of it, so you should be able to align it properly like that. It may not touch the half groove yet, but once you screw it down, it should sync with it perfectly. Okay. Thread it through, and as you can see, it lined up perfectly. You may have to sync up the gears again. Tighten that down nice and tight. Not too tight, you don't want to strip it or break the screw. Just, as you can see, you're probably working with limited gear, limited spare parts. You don't really want that to happen. However, it always, it's nice to have spare parts, so if you can, try to get your hands on some. There you go. Should be synced properly. You want to leave it in the semi position, like so. Okay. Now, here's the hardest part of it all: getting these teeth aligned and staying in place when you put it inside the body. You want to take the safety latch, put that right there. Okay. Let it move around there for a moment. Okay. Align the teeth accordingly, like so. When it's in semi mode, it's all the way down. So you want to make sure the this bottom tooth right here touches with this bottom tooth right here. You want to make sure it looks something like that. I'm gonna zoom in on that for you guys. 
It should look something like that. Okay, if it keeps moving around like that, don't worry. As long as the teeth are in the proper position, it should be able to do this. See, and it can very easily go off sync right here. Hence the problem that we have. Okay. It should just be sit like that. Okay, so it sits like that, good. Alrighty. Now the next step would be to get the rest of the screws inside the gearbox. Okay. Put your screws in accordingly. There. Right there, right there. Okay. Screw these down nice and good. Okay. Okay. And your gearbox should be together for the most part. Uh, and we'll go on to how to put it back in the body. Okay. Now we'll show you how to get the gearbox inside the body of the gun. The challenge of this is trying to make sure that these teeth don't misalign. This can be done just by simply taking your time and making sure that everything's in order when you get it in. Okay? So you want to take your lower receiver. You want to take the motor cage portion of your gearbox and slide it through the bottom of it. This portion right here. Okay. There's a groove inside the motor cage to where you can put the wiring. It'll help make things a lot smoother. And just let things go slide right in like so. Okay. Now to make sure these don't misalign, just gently push it in there. And before you do the, anything, you want to put your Tamiya through the fourth cage right here. There's a square shaped groove in here. You want to just push this through while putting this right here. There's another challenge you face right here. There's a specially contoured groove on this side of the gearbox and there's a special uh, there's a special groove inside the uh, the receiver. This, you want to be careful not to pinch this because this will cause a hindrance in trying to get this gun together. The other part is you want to make sure that this wiring right here sits on the outer part of this gearbox. There's a lot that can go wrong during this phase right here, but if you have enough patience, you can do it. As you can see, your wiring should look something like that when you put it in. The outer part of this should be on the outer part of the front part of the gearbox. And this should be in a, this special groove right here. It should have, it should not pinch. It should not have any resistance going in. Okay. Now, to save yourself the trouble of having to worry about the gearbox coming out, you can slide the grip back on, like so. And then you can take the retaining screw on the bottom and screw that in, real good. That should help you avoid any headaches. Okay. The next step to getting the gun back together would be to put the selector arm on. Now, if you remember before, I said that um, a lot of these parts can get lost, and this can prove to be a real nuisance down the road if not taken care of properly. Hence, this is where we'll need the thread locker to help alleviate this problem in the future. Okay. The first step to this would be to take your thread locker it doesn't matter what brand, uh, you could use Loctite, etc, etc. Um, for this, I yeah, recommend using high to medium strength uh, thread locker. I'm using 42 thread locker. Um, when you do this, take explicit care not to put too much inside here, because if you do, it'll drop onto the sector gear and the tappet plate, and you don't want that to happen, because that'll cause your gun to have performance problems, so you just want to put a drop, a very small drop inside there, just that. That'll be more than enough to hold it in place too, so. Okay, close up your thread locker so that doesn't dry up. Stuff's awfully expensive. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Wait, wait, thank you. 
Okay. After you've had the thread locker in there, what you want to do is it'll put your linkage hub in place right there. There's a small groove on the top of the selector, on the selector linkage. Uh, you should match up with the selector plate on the inside. Like so. Okay. And then after once you've done that, you want to take your brass bushing, slide that in the hole right there. Okay. Then you want to take your selector arm, put it on like so. Okay. Put it whatever position you feel like. And then you want to take your, I call it a little clutch plate, and uh, put that over there. Um, you want to put that over there so this doesn't slip around too much. So, and then you want to take your screw, put that inside the hole. Okay. Once it's in place, you want to screw it down, like so. Okay. Don't over tighten it. Don't. Uh, don't hyper tighten it, just make sure you got it right. It should be a nice firm, it should have that noise. Okay. Now that all that's in place, you can choose to put your little hub on, but I'm going to leave it off because it's cool like that. Okay. Now you got to put your front portion of the gearbox, or uh, rather the receiver, the barrel and front part of this on. This is kind of tricky with the. Uh, the nuts that are inside the um, the or upper portion. You want to make sure those don't slide out when you're putting it in. This is easily done just by flipping the gun upside down and making sure that it doesn't slide around too much. You can do this like so. Okay, push it in. Okay. Once the hop up lines up with this groove right here, this little oblong groove, it should just slide right in like that. Okay. And then you want to take your receiver screws and screw them down. Screw them down until they're not tight but loose, where they kind of just stop spinning. Okay, cool. Most advice uh, tightening these in sequence because um, on, this is just a habit to get into on metal guns because if you strip the threads inside here, it's not as forgiving as this model. Then just tighten them in sequence. You can do it counterclockwise, clockwise. Okay, to where it's nice and snug. There we go. Almost violated my own rule there. Okay. Okay. And that's not going anywhere. Okay. Then you want to put your plastic cover back on. Again, if you followed my step earlier, make sure you don't let this rod come out because that just is a real nuisance to get out. But before you put this back on, you want to put your locking uh, your locking button in place, which is easily done. It's got sort of a a tapered um, a tapered groove right here to where it kind of bottlenecks up right here to set this bracket with the wide portion of it right here and push it back in place like that. Okay. Then you want to put your plastic assembly on back on top. Okay. Okay. This is easily done by making sure that this guide rod goes in like so. Okay. And then you want to make sure that this syncs properly with the If you do this right, it should just it, the interlocking tabs on the side of the body should mesh together like that. It should mesh together perfectly. It should make something of like an end shape. Okay. Then you want to push forward on your charging handle rod. It's hard to do on a table that slides around. Okay. You want to make sure this push forward and this locks in place like that. You should just be able to do that. Right. And then you want to take the small screw that you pulled out of the top portion and you want to put it right back where you found it, right there. Okay. You 
you might want to use your precision screwdriver and screw that down nice and good. Okay. Um, you could choose to put your uh, your hop up arm back on in the inside, but I usually do that to last, and I'm going to. So, okay. <clears throat> then you want to put your stock back on. This is the next step. Reattach your Tamiya right here. Just reattach it like so. And it just goes into place. And then you want to pull this through. Make sure that the length of grooves match up to each other. And you just want to push it just like that. And it goes in with ease. Okay. And then you want to put your bottom screws in first because there's more of these. So long shaft screwdriver should do right here. As I said before, you can take off, it's advised you take off the motor cover if you have a precision screwdriver. Because doing this at an angle proves to be a real nu nuisance. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Put the top screw back in. Then you want to put your your bowl housing cover back on. Should not have any play whatsoever. Okay. And then you want to put your wiring back in the butt of your gun. Put your butt plate back on. Okay. The gun's mostly intact. Okay. Now you want to put your selector arm back on. Pull back on your charging handle. Take this part that's contoured right on this side. Push it right there, trying to line it with the hole. There you go. Then you want to take your precision screwdriver on the small screw that came with it. Okay. Put it inside the hole there. Screw it down. There you go. Your selector arm or your, your hop up arm should be in place. And you can put your linkage hub back on. Or your, uh, your hub, sorry. Little protective hub, take your rubber mallet. This just stays right in place. Okay. Now that's the overhaul of a CM28 AK47 airsoft gun. I hope this video has helped. If you managed to bear through it with me, if you have any questions, hit us an email, give us a call, and we'll gladly help you through this. Thanks for choosing Hit Guns and have a wonderful day.